Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Schenkel United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Pastor Suzanne, and I use the pronouns she and her. Welcome to worship today. A couple of announcements. Following the service, we have an ice cream social. Five dollars, all you can eat. Plus there's other food up there besides the ice cream. And there's more food besides just ice cream. So please go up to the pavilion following worship and enjoy. Um, we continue to collect items to give to the cluster, and this month we have another week to give uh, men's and women's razors and shaving cream. And we put them in that bin over there and then um, deliver them to the cluster. Next Sunday, July 28th, we are going to um, continue our conversation on Gaza. I didn't want to let that drop after we had some really good conversations. And so following worship, around 11.30 or so, we will um, gather in the social hall. And are we just doing potluck, potluck. bring your own lunch, potluck, potluck lunch? And um, we'll continue using the, the resource with some videos that um, we started out with and continue that conversation. Uh, thank you to all who are getting work done on the property. There's been a lot of work done. We've had the, our tree guy, he ground 59 stumps oh, wow. out in the grove from the trees he took down and from the ones that were already just stumps out there. So that should make the mowing and all of that easier out there. Um, and a crew painted um, picnic tables, benches, a crew did some weeding out in the labyrinth. The um, social hall, if you haven't seen the whole social hall recently, it's beautiful, freshly painted, looks great. And we got rid of those long runners, so we didn't get rid of them. They're rolled up somewhere. If you have use for one, please see Kim Yoakum, okay? And downstairs in the basement, there was shelving along one wall that we're going to get rid of. If you have a use for that, again, please seek him. And uh, be happy to have you take it off our hands. And so just a reminder about paper towels. We have one more month to collect um, 40 paper towels to give to the uh, Christ Episcopal for their... Um, pantry. So we've been collecting and delivering 40 rolls of paper towels each month. And so um, we have one more. I have them in my car to transfer to Barb's car for tomorrow. And then we just have uh, the month of August to collect those. I think those are the announcements unless someone else has. Yes. The, uh, concert in August. Oh, yes. I didn't write that down. It's on my mind, but yes, we have the concert, Bobby Joe Valentine concert on August 10th. That will start at 7 o'clock here, and I understand it's going to be here in the Grove, but bring your, bring your chairs and if, if you don't want to sit on the benches <laughs> or blankets or whatever, and that's going to be a great concert. It will be preceded by the first annual Air, Pottstown Area Pride Festival starting at 4, and so we're going to have activities and fun things here culminating in Bobby Joe's concert. So if we can have some physical help. Yes, we always need you can go you can sign up to volunteer at pottstownpride.org and you can sign up to volunteer in a specific area if you want to help with food or you know be a runner to go get things for people, go grab more ice in the freezer or something like help that. Set up and break down and so, yeah, so there's a, um, lots of involvement from area churches. So First Baptist Pottstown, First Baptist Royers Ford, Open Table UCC, Trinity UCC Pottstown. So we have um, the Presbyterian Church in Pottstown. We have members who are involved. So lots of, lots of support from um, area churches for that. So that's coming up soon, isn't it? Okay. And today we get to have a celebrate a baptism, and that's always a lot of fun. So let's begin with a word of prayer. 
Thank you, gracious God, for a beautiful day you've given to us, for this beautiful place to be gathered for worship. We ask that in this time together right now, you would quiet our hearts and help us to lay aside the busyness of getting here, the plans that we have for later today, that you would help us to be present to your spirit, to one another. Open our hearts and help us to be sanctuaries. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. our call to worship. Come away and rest for a while. Leave behind your busyness to be fully present to God. We have come for relief from life's turmoil. God gathers us as a shepherd gathers her sheep. God's steadfast love surrounds us here. We are reminded of God's enduring faithfulness. This is God's house and we are God's children. God invites us to feel at home in this place. And I invite you, if you are able and comfortable with standing, you can stand for our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
Christ, God broke the barrier of sin and pain which separates us from our neighbor, ourselves, and our God. We seek God's grace so we might move from alienation to new life. When we deny your presence in our busy days, when we feel justified in our anger and resentment toward others, when we judge ourselves before looking at ourselves, O oh God, grant us new life in you. When we occupy ourselves in worldly matters and reject your peace and assurance, when we refuse to follow your will because we are fearful and untrusting, when we seek the security of false gods and turn our faces from your light, O oh God, grant us new life in you. There is no greater joy in the heart of God than this moment now. For in this moment, we call upon God to grant us new life in the center of our wounded hearts. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free. You may be seated.
Thank you, Lexi, for singing that song so beautifully. Our first reading is taken from 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 14a. I'm reading from the New International Reader's Version. The king moved into his palace. The Lord had given him peace and rest from all his enemies around him. Then the king spoke to Nathan the prophet. He said, Here I am living in a house that has beautiful cedar walls, but the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Go ahead and do what you want. The Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. The Lord said, Go and speak to my servant David. Tell him, the Lord says, you are the one to build me a house to live in? I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but I have not lived in a house from then until now. I have been moving from place to place with all the Israelites. I commanded their rulers to be shepherded over them. I never ask any of those rulers, why haven't you built me a house that has beautiful cedar walls? So tell my servant David, the Lord who rules over all says, I took you away from the grasslands. That's where you were taking care of your father's sheep and goats. I made you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you everywhere you have gone. I have destroyed all your enemies. Now I will make you famous. Your name will be just as repeated and respected as the names of the most important people on earth. I will provide a place where my people Israel can live. I will plant them in the land. Then they will have a home of their own. They will not be bothered anymore. Evil people will no longer crush them as they did at first. That is what your enemies have done ever since I appointed leaders over my people Israel. But I will give you peace and rest from all of them. I tell you that I, the Lord, will set up a royal house for you. Someday your life will come to an end. You will join the members of your family who have already died. Then I will make one of your sons the next king after you. I will put my name. I will set up the throne of his kingdom. It will last forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. Our second reading is Psalm 89, verses 20 through 37. It was authored by a man named Ethan, who was a Levite and one of the chief musicians in Solomon's temple. I have found my servant David. I have poured my sacred oil on his head. My powerful hand will keep him going. My mighty arm will give him strength. No enemy will have the victory over him. No evil person will treat him badly. I will crush the king's enemies. I will completely destroy them. I will love him and be faithful to him. Because of me, his power will increase. I will give him a great kingdom. It will reach from the Mediterranean Sea to the Euphrates River. He will call out to me, you are my father, you are my God, you are my rock and savior. I will also make him my oldest son. Among all the kings of the earth, he will be the most important one. I will continue to love him forever. I will never break my covenant with him. I will make his family line continue forever. His kingdom will last as long as the heavens. What if his son, what if his sons turn away from my laws and do not follow them? What if they disobey my orders and fail to keep my commands? Then I will punish them for their sins. I will strike them with a rod. I will whip them for their evil acts. But I will not stop loving David. I will always be faithful to him. I will not break my covenant. I will not go back on my word. Once and for all, I have made a promise. It is based on my holiness. And I will not lie to David. His family line will continue forever. His kingdom will last as long as the sun. It will last forever like the moon, that faithful witness in the sky.
Our gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 6. We're um, going to be skipping around a little bit with different verses. The apostles, which is sent ones, gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over the, the uh, Sea of Galilee again, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the people of God. So it's summertime, and it's vacation time, isn't it? We're missing a few people in worship because they're on vacation or getting ready to go on vacation. I just got back from a vacation. Um, last Saturday we got back home and we were in West Virginia at a state park. And in Pocahontas County, West Virginia, they kind of pride themselves on not having very much cell phone service. <laughs> so apparently people who who have sensitivity to electricity, which I didn't know was such a thing, but apparently is. They're, they're somewhere in Pocahontas County that they've moved to because there's not much interference. And um, so while we were at the park, we, we were completely disconnected, which is really good sometimes and really good for a vacation because we're really connected to our devices, aren't we? We want to know what the news, see who's emailed, all of those kinds of things. But, um, and so in our text today, Jesus was kind of trying to get his disciples to come away. I've always been amazed that they, there were so many people coming and going to Jesus and his disciples that they didn't have leisure even to eat. That's pretty serious, because we're pretty serious about our food too, aren't we? They didn't even have leisure to eat. Um, in the rest of the story, which we didn't read, he goes on to feed the 5,000. So that's part of the story that we didn't read. But he calls them to come away by themselves and to rest a while. So it's a, you know, it's a, a good thing. And even then when they crossed back over the lake, then people recognized them and came from everywhere. And wherever Jesus went, people were, seemed to be swarming and in need expressing their need for healing and wholeness. And what was Jesus' reaction? He kept giving of himself, didn't he? Even when, they, when he specifically called them to go to a deserted place, well, they thought it was a deserted place, people recognized them, ran there ahead of them, and it says when Jesus got there, he had compassion on them, and then he began to teach them many things. And so as I was thinking about this text and, it, and when I first read it, it felt a little mishmash, like it didn't have a whole coherent um, piece of storyline. And then someone that I read brought up the, the idea, and I thought, this is really good for us to think about. How does your God view the world? So that's a very theological question, right? how we think about God. So your God, when you think about God, how does God view the world? And then its twin question is an ethical question. How does your God ask you to view the world? So 
for many, most religions, even primitive ones and recent deities, have been regarded as ominous, wrathful, vengeful, angry, vindictive. I mean, for some primitive examples, think about Greek mythology, <laughs> all the, the wars and all the, the terrible things that the gods would do to the people and, you know, the things that we read about. And Christianity, unfortunately, has not been exempt from that. Think back in the churches that supported slavery and the idea that people of a different skin color were not as good as other people and needed to be enslaved. But often in religion, because of the way people view their God, they have, you know, the God has kind of not been very approachable, right? If your God is vindictive, vengeful, angry, you have to carefully devise and guard rituals on how you approach that God. And usually then there develops a priestly caste that knows how to do these things you know, and help the average person to approach a God like that. So how does your God view the world? I'd like to go back to Genesis 1 in the first creation story where God created the world, and it was very good. It was very good. And I like to look at Jesus, who we believe as Christians was sent to show us, right, what God is like. Someone with flesh and blood. Someone we could really relate to to show us what God is like. And what does Jesus do? Even when he's trying to get away for a while with his disciples, he's moved with compassion. And compassion is one of those, an interesting word, with passion, with feeling. It's, a, it's one that talks about our gut. So it's a feeling you sometimes get in your gut. Right. Compassion. And it's not, especially for Jesus, it's not merely a feeling. For Jesus, it's a doing. It's an action. So, as followers of Jesus, that's what we need to work on that too. That the compassion, it, and um, someone wrote, it hits you in the gut and sends you into motion for the sake of others. And I kind of like that idea. Compassion hits you in the gut and it sends you in motion for the sake of others. Just one example. In 2020, when Faith and I were watching the news of George Floyd, that hit us in the gut. And we said... We need to do something. We can't just sit here. And so we drove to Washington, D.C. and participated in a Black Lives Matter demonstration. And we knew there was a risk. Because here, even in, close by in Philadelphia, they were using tear gas and breaking up crowds and you know, clearing the way for photo ops and all those kinds of things. But we were moved with compassion. We needed to stand with the people whose lives have been in danger for so long in our country. And I have a, a story that I want to share today of a, another person who doesn't happen to be a Christian. It happens to be a Muslim. But it's from my this book, Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints. I've, I've shared a couple of these stories with you before. It's actually a children's book, so it's great. <laughs> I like children's books, and it has a colorful picture. So the person is called Maryam. I guess it would be Marion, or just Mary, and, 
if we use it. Miriam Mokara, and she's from Iran. One day in Iran, a woman named Miriam had to dig deep inside of herself and find an enormous amount of courage. She needed to try to change a law in her country, but in order to try to change it, she knew she might be hurt or put in prison. But she had already been imprisoned and treated badly for being honest about herself, and she knew something had to change. She also knew that she was the best person to try to bring about the change. You see, Mariam was transgender. When she was born, her parents and doctor thought she looked like a boy, and so that is how they thought of her. Inside, however, she always knew she was a girl. When I was very small, I used to scream when they tried to dress me in boys' clothes, Marianne said. Every night, I prayed for a miracle, but in the morning, I looked at my body, and it hadn't happened. When she was older, she got a job as a nurse in a hospital where she was known for her gentle hands. A doctor who worked there was also transgender, but he was a transgender man who had already fully transitioned to living as a man. One day, Miriam confided to him that she felt like she was really a woman. He told her that he understood, and he told her his story. He explained to her what it meant to be transgender. She had never realized that other people also had similar experiences of being born in a body that looked on the outside like one gender, but on the inside they knew they were another. She felt so much better knowing she was not alone and she began to start dressing as a woman much of the time. She also took hormones that helped her body look more like woman, a woman's. When Mary Ann finally told her parents about her true self, they were very upset. She decided to go to a religious authority as both she and her parents were very devout Muslims. Mary Ann's struggles grew harder in 1979 when Iran had a revolution and the government of the country was taken over by strict religious leaders. Rules about how people had to look, dress, and behave got stricter, and there were especially strict rules about gender roles. Maryam was punished on several occasions for dressing like a woman and even got thrown into prison. She was lucky to have connections with powerful people who helped to get her out. She was forced to take a hormone to make her look more like a man, she had to grow a beard, something expected of men under the new religious leaders. Maryam was miserable. She knew she was a woman, yet was forced to look and live like a man. She decided she needed to visit the most powerful religious leader in the country, Ayatollah Khomeini, to ask for permission to live as the woman she knew inside that she was meant to be. She knew this was a big risk, and yet she knew she had to try. She went to the compound where Ayatollah Khomeini's office was. She placed a pair of shoes around her neck, a well-known symbol in her country of someone seeking shelter and refuge. She also carried a Quran to help convey the message that she came in peace. Unfortunately, the Ayatollah's guards did not honor her symbols of peace and shelter and began to beat her. To them, she looked like a man dressed in a suit with a beard. They thought she had come to harm the Ayatollah. I am a woman, I am a woman, Mariam cried out. The Ayatollah's son, hearing her cries, came out to investigate. He intervened and told the guards to stop. He brought Mariam to his father. Mariam began to tell her story, and her story touched the hearts of everyone in the room. Mariam's courage paid off. She walked out of the Ayatollah's office with a letter giving her legal and religious permission to seek the medical treatment she needed to safely and fully live as a woman. The letter he gave her not only gave Maryam freedom to live her life as her authentic self, but it gave other transgender Iranians the same religious and legal permission. She later started an organization to spread awareness and help other transgender people know about their rights. She is remembered today as a trailblazer. Maryam's bold and risky walk into the Ayatollah's office had forever not only changed her life, but the lives of other transgender people in Iran, too. 
And I just share her story because of her compassion and her action that was help for many other people as well. So in closing today, how does your God view the world? How does your God ask you to view the world? And I believe that our God sees the world with compassion as shown in Jesus and his life and asks us to do the same. Not just feel it, but to act it. Thanks be to God. Members and friends in Christ, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all. Jesus said, unless we are born anew, we cannot see the reign of God. Unless we are born of water and the spirit, we cannot enter God's new order. Paul the Apostle said, All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into Christ's death. We were buried, therefore, with Christ by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God, we too might walk in newness of life. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God, inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life. 
forgiven of sin, and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. So I will invite Erica and Kyle and Gio to come up. We just got a new toy. <laughs> Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? So, say we. Will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? So, say we will with the help of God. Will you teach this child that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Mm -hmm. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, so we do with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow with this child in the Christian faith? to help this child to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that he may affirm his baptism. If so, say we do with the help of God. Congregation. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one about to be baptized as he lives and grows in Christ? We promise our love, support, and care. Okay, let us join together then in saying the um, statement of faith from the United Church of Christ. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. We call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion of victory. You promise to all who trust in you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people of Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the Promised Land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by water and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in all those baptized this day, that they may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end. Amen. This is Gio Minetti, the newest member of the family of God through his baptism. At least he didn't cry. the candle doesn't stay in it. A little baptismal candle, his baptismal certificate, a lovely little baptismal blanket made by a member of the church, and a little door hanger also. That's it. Just one moment. We have a, just a, a prayer. Let us pray for the one baptized today. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of Jesus. Bless this newly baptized child. May he be filled with joy. May he never be ashamed to confess a personal faith in you. Bless the parents of this child. May they always show their gratitude for the life you have given by loving and caring for Gio. Bless these, your faithful people. Unite them in the peace of Christ and the company of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us um, sing together the, the insert in your bulletins. Welcome, children. As we come to our prayer time this morning, uh, I have some news that, well, some of you have heard because it flows through the grapevine, but um, Sue Culp is at um, Pottstown Hospital on hospice. So she wanted me to let you know, and she would be happy to see 
anyone who would like to come and say hello and goodbye. Um, we're not sure how long it will be, but you know that she has, as long as I have known Sue, she's been on dialysis. And um, she, she told me the other day, she said, this just has to stop. She has been hospital, hospitalized like 34 times this year. And so um, we we'll continue to hold Sue and Mike and her daughter Sarah in our prayers. And um, please uh, feel free to, to go and, and see Sue also. Um, so I have um, one treatment down and three to go. So four treatments. It's immunotherapy, which is it's actually the same I think the same drug that Joni has. So four Mondays in a row, four <coughs> weekly treatments. And um, so far it's been okay, you know, a little fatigue, but that's kind of normal for people in treatment. So um, appreciate your continued prayers, and especially on Mondays. Hopefully they won't be as long as the first one. Um, it was a very, a very long day. But, um, <coughs> thank you for, for accompanying me in this whole Whole journey. We will also continue to pray for for Joan and for Tootie as they also continue their <laughs> immunotherapy treatments and, and pray for healing there. Um, we continue to lift up uh, Ukraine, Sudan, Lebanon, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, these places where there is armed conflict. And um, are there other Prayer request that you would like to be remembered this morning in our prayer time together. Lynn. I'm going to read it. Um, this is prayers of healing and strength for sharing our time with Dr. Berg. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She was diagnosed with a, a brain tumor last year. Mm -hmm. And she's been moved on January 2nd. She's gone through radiation and chemo for six weeks, and she's still doing chemo every month. She was scheduled for an appointment again on Friday. But couldn't have it because of all the technical um, the computer glitch. Yeah. yeah. So just prayers of healing and strength, and that when she gets her scan, rescheduled, which is good. Um, she lost function in her left side and just started to uh, walk again with the cane, but she can't use her left arm. Um, prayers to the family for her. Okay. So, prayer, so some of you may know Sherry Hartung Flaxenberger. Is that the right name? Okay. So um, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor and has undergone quite a few treatments. We are supposed to have a scan on Friday, but with that whole big computer glitch that happened around the world, um, she wasn't able to have that scan. So prayers for, for healing and wholeness for her and that this, this scan would show that she's on her way to recovery and so sharing. Joan. Um, I have two actually. Um, Joe's niece, Heather, answered her prayers for a friend, Tess, who had a stroke and is now in a coma. To be a young woman around 40. Uh, so prayers for her. And so Tess is the one who had the stroke? Had the stroke. So, um, prayers for Tess, who had a stroke and is in a coma. Okay. Um, and also prayers of joy that Angela, who is Joan's niece, is here in the States from Malawi. And um, she did, she contacted me and she, at first we thought she was going to be here today. But then she... She's had malaria, and she said it's taking a lot longer to get over that than she thought. And so Angela will be here to tell us about Mustard Seed Malawi. And we've been involved in um, supporting like the painting of the building and, I don't know, a roof or something with her, her preschool and the work she's doing there. So on 
the day after the concert and Pride Fest, on the 11th of August, she will be with us to, to share that. So that's great. That's a joy to... I didn't know if you got up there or if she came down. I she... was up there. Okay. <laughs> and then I brought her down. So oh, okay. Oh, well, that was nice. Are there others? Okay. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? We give thanks, Holy One, for the opportunity to be able to come to you in prayer and to be able to support one another in all that life throws our ways, that we can always bring people's needs and know that you you are aware and you are at work in the world. And we pray today for the thousands of people who are living in fear and so much uncertainty because of warfare in the places where they live, for the people of Ukraine, the people of Sudan, the people of Lebanon and Israel and the Gaza Strip and the West Bank and other places, oh God, that perhaps don't make our news feed, but where people are in need of your peace and your comfort, of safety. And we lift up world leaders and ask for your working in their hearts to give them the desire to bring about peaceful means for the people that they are representing, that they would want to to broker peace and to be a positive and a helpful force for their communities. We also lift up before you those who are closer to home and we think of Lisa and Barry and ask for your continued grace and strength and help for them and for healing and wholeness for Lisa. We lift up Sue and Mike and know that this has been a difficult decision in many ways and yet in other ways a no-brainer for Sue and we ask for peaceful hearts, for your grace and your provision for them as they walk this road and walk it with hospice and others. We give thanks for finally a diagnosis for me and for treatment and for an effective first treatment and ask for your blessing as we continue the treatments. For Joan and Tootie likewise, we pray that their treatments would be effective in treating their disease and helping their bodies to fight the disease. We lift up Sherry today and pray for good recovery for her as she begins to walk again and learns a new way of being, we pray that she would be able to reschedule her scan and that it would show healing and wholeness for her. We lift up her family as well, and for Tess and her family and friends, we pray that you would bless and guide in that situation and bring the healing and wholeness that is needed, and the comfort and grace as they walk with her. We give thanks that Angela is here in the States and we pray for, for a return to full health and strength for her, for blessings in all of the details that she needs to take care of while she is stateside, and for your blessings on the ministries that she has left in the hands of others back in Malawi. We also offer to you our, our prayers of thanks and our excitement about the Bobby Joe Valentine concert and the Pride Festival and all those who are working to make it possible. We ask for your blessing, that it would be a blessing to all who come, that we would have a fun afternoon together and we really would be able to enjoy Bobby Joe's music at the concert. We thank you for your grace and your presence in our lives. And thank you that we can always pray together as a faith community that prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So as we come to our offering time, I made a special note for the administrator to be careful to have this the correct month's special offering in the bulletin. <laughs> so the offering for July is the Bill Burhans Memorial Scholarship. Okay, and I, I didn't know if it was only in mine, but I looked at another bulletin and saw that it was, it was the last month. So just remember that that's a special offering. And I, do we have a couple of people to help take up our offering today? <laughs> God for this opportunity to give our offerings. We ask for you to bless each offering and each giver. May these offerings go to further your work of love and grace and equity in all the world around us. We give thanks in Christ's name. Amen.
go forth into this new week, may we go forth living with, pondering the question, what did, how does your God see the world? And how does your God ask you to see the world? And whatever you an answer you come up with, may it show forth God's love and grace more and more to the people around you. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you.